welcome to the online interview of the Media Expert. We're pleased to introduce our guest today, Mr. Julian Miaggio, Global Head of Development Miaggio Design Group. Welcome to the interview. Thank you, Mauro. Thank you very much for having me today. Good. So we know you are from home. You know, we are locked in Singapore. Um, so I'll start the first question really asking how you guys are doing this period and maybe also how your clients are going through this. Which one of the market that are still active and which one are less? Oh. I'm not sure if you can still see me. You've, uh, the camera's paused on your side for a hot second. But um, thank you so much again for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be um, catching up with you, Mauro. Uh, and I think that especially during this COVID-19, we've all become quite acclimatized now to be doing more and more video calls together. Um, I think uh, for us here in Singapore, ever since the initial uh, circuit breaker, as we're calling it over here, was uh, implemented on the 7th of April, uh, I have to admit that it was quite a, an interesting transition for us at the company because uh, from one day to the next upon receiving the, um, the announcement from the government, I think it left us with virtually one day to kind of get everybody set up. Um, it meant that all of our employees ended up taking all of their workstation home, workstations home with them. And since then, I think it's just been about trying to find the best possible way to stay in communication internally as a team. And uh, especially with our clients, it's maintaining that same level of communication we would on a normal basis. Um, of course, you know, there has when trying to do a presentation online to a client, it doesn't have the quite uh, the same flair. But I think that in terms of being able to deliver that to a client, um, it's still very important that they feel that regardless of whether we're right there next to them or on a screen, uh, we're able to deliver our vision and our ideas clearly. Um, some of the strategies that we've implemented really, I think, is just it's about trying to find the most uh, streamlined way for our team to be able to be in communication. I think that, of course, you know, you have, uh, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and Stack, uh, all these different sorts of um, kind of technologies that so, sort of have been helping us to kind of keep on top and make sure that we're never too far apart from each other. I think that, you know, respectively in Singapore, we are very lucky in that we don't suffer from um, internet issues. We're always, you know, I think that I think that that's something that other places might have seen, but I think overall we consider ourselves very lucky that um, you know, working from the comfort of our own home, some are familiar. I think that it does change the mind a little bit creatively, but I think that it's definitely an inward reflection to be able to uh, see things in a different light. And that means as well, how are future guests and clients gonna be able to interact with the space? Does it mean that we're returning more to the more residential feel in the hospitality um, sphere? Maybe. Um, and I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think that we're maybe seeing the new norm um, but I think that once we're all able to get back on the road again, and once we're able to interact on a face-to-face, -face, I think that maybe the value will be double fold than before. Do you guys do usually more residential or, uh, or resort? We know that we are involved in both of them. What's the main field really of the company? What has been? Ah, so, I mean, principally we're, we've been by and large mainly involved in hospitality. So whether it's, uh, city hotels, island resorts, or beachfront resorts. Um, and of course we do residential as well. The, the trend at the moment is that we see our clients, um, especially in India, slowing down. I mean, this is because um, of the government protocols themselves. So I think each country has seen a different level of protocol in terms of how they're able to A, work in the office or whether they're allowed to continue working on site. Um, we've seen this the most in the Philippines and in India for some of our projects. Uh, residential, we've actually seen an increase in residential projects for us here in Singapore um, and as well within the region, not residential developments, but more in the private residential themselves. Um, our other projects, uh, projects like we have in Sri Lanka, that seems to be on course. Um, and uh, our project in Bangkok, which is a hospital that we've been working on as well in healthcare, that seems to be progressing um, as well. Excellent, thank you. Um, it was interesting your comment into the, the missing the human touch when you deliver the presentation through all this Zoom and video conference. That's probably the part that is most painful, not actually be able 
to have a bit of, mm. a bit of empathy and a, a bit of a human touch for the other person. Looking into the future, what is your overview of this recovery? Now, I'm sitting in Vietnam. He has started already in the last couple of weeks. We start to see a bit more activity, resort opening again. People go out. Singapore will, will follow soon. Thailand will be there. What's your view into the recovery and when the full recovery um, will be reached? Mm, um, that's a great question. I think, I think in terms of the recovery, I think we're going to be seeing... Well, we're all hoping that by everyone having been in lockdown, that there's going to be this sudden resurge of people wanting to travel. However, I think it's really going to be on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on how, A, the World Health Organization kind of define how people are able to travel. And then I think it's also going to come to an individual level and also in a, in a city level. Um, I think what the country's address would be in terms of saying, sure, we'd love to have people coming back. I think though, from a city level, depending on the level of organization, I think we're gonna see definitely a, a delay in terms of how fast implementation in terms of what is being told from a country level, being told to a city, and then even maybe to a sub-region level. Um, I think that we're all, I think in terms of air travel now, I think that we're definitely gonna be seeing a continued trend of only 50% capacity in terms of planes ensuring that some sort of social distancing is being adhered to. I think masks and temperature taking are also going to be a new norm. And I think even maybe, um, I think even we'll most likely need to have uh, doctors certifications to ensure that we've actually, you know, that as an individual, we've departed the country healthy and that we're not maybe carrying something with us over. Um, I'd love to say that, you know, for us here in Singapore, that once this, um, the second circuit breaker comes to an end in June, that, you know, we, you know, I think first of all, first of all, it's for us to all be back in the office. Second of all, I think it's going to be all the hotels reopening as well, because I know that a lot of them here in Singapore have closed. And I think that um, it's also about getting the right staff back. Um, you know, a lot of these hotels have unfortunately lost a lot of their key staff and I think that maybe it's an opportunity internally now for hotel management to look at well can we look to bring the best possible talent whether it's in the F&B uh, even from the concierge to the reception desks right um, so I think that ultimately where we'd like to think by end of June I think that we won't be seeing till August September at least here in Singapore um, especially with Singapore government taking such stringent measures to ensure that, you know, Singapore uh, comes back um, with, you know, a good bounce back. Thank you. A lot of interesting comments. Picking up on your airport comment that will have probably a bit more control and health and doctor. Um, so the airport may change actually the way they operate. But do you think this will be also brought to the design of a hotel? And this is a probably my last question to you. Do you see that all those changes that are happening will impact the design, the way you guys will design property in the future? Mm. I think ultimately people are going to be still looking for an experience. Now, I think that we've seen a lot of great media in terms of how the earth and how nature is coming back into the city. I think we've seen wonderful reports of how animals are, you know, not as shy to be able to take back spaces, which were, I think, originally theirs. Um, and I think with the sudden, you know, the sudden downfall in terms of the amount of human traffic that's been coming, um, we've been able to see a beautiful resurgence of life come through into these spaces. I think that ultimately people are still looking for a space that grounds them into, into the local context of where they're visiting. Uh, I think in terms of design as well, that maybe I think from an operator standpoint, um, and also from the government standpoint, we might be seeing something like uh, I don't know, hand, more, I guess, if it were when you first arrive into the pre-lobby area that maybe now instead of, you know, the bag scanner, the bag scanner for your luggage and then a metal scanner for you, maybe we'll see another kind of scanner, which is actually going to be the next evolution of all of this, which is actually going to be checking your uh, temperature and your vitals to make sure that as a guest, you're coming into a bigger space with lots of other people that you're not potentially infecting them. I think that only time will tell and what governments sort of recommend in terms of how hotels in bigger cities and then in smaller cities should be handling this um, will really come into play. And I think operationally for hotels, 
Um, I think we'll definitely start to see more guidelines in terms of health and safety, in terms of how thorough and in terms of how often the deep cleans maybe are happening in a space. Um, so I think operations for hotels, this could maybe impact us on the design sense, design sense, but I see it to be very minimal. But I think ultimately the key takeaway is that people are coming to look for an experience and that experience should be really about the place that they're visiting. Um, and I think that that's what we still would like to be able to give to our clients and definitely um, to future guests as well. Hey, Usula, very interesting. I think uh, we discussed actually yesterday, there was a webinar where we were discussing with an with a, um, international operator. They also believe that there would be certain change into the SOP and also the brand standard. A lot of them are related to the, the health and, and, and the check and everything that is the cleanness of the room. Okay, so thank you very much for, for joining us today. There was a, a brief but full of content uh, a chat. <laughs> we have you coming back to Vietnam or seeing you in Singapore very soon and maybe joining one of our next webinar. Thank you very much. Definitely. Thank you, Mauro. Appreciate it. Thank you all and keep healthy and keep safe and see you soon.